we may have to change the order of integration if the integral is too hard as is. So just like when we had planar regions, what we'll do is we'll sketch the region and we'll look for a way to set up the bounds differently. In this case, we're, we're, we need to integrate, uh, these are all, if we integrate with respect to y on the inside, then um, 12 and the x and the z are all constants. We're really trying to find an antiderivative of e to a constant times y squared, and there isn't really a closed form for that antiderivative. So we'd like to um, change the order of integration and see if we could make this integral a little bit easier. So the first thing is to understand just the region that we're integrating with respect to. The innermost variable is y, and so the bounds on the innermost integral are really bounds on y. And then comes x, so we have x from 0 to 1, and then comes z, and we have z from 0 to 1. Now I notice these bounds describe just a simple square in the xz plane. x goes out to y 1 and z goes out to 1, so that's just a nice square. And then for every point, or if we looked at it three-dimensionally here, I'll rotate the x over into its usual position and we'll have a square like this. And then for every one of those values, the highest value for y is 1, so the furthest y comes forward is out here to 1, and uh, the minimum value for y is x squared. So the curve y equals x squared is just a parabola, so we have kind of this parabolic region right here. So for every point here, and this here's our region R, huh? We we bust into the into the region coming through the that sort of parabolic cylinder, and then we come out that vertical plane. So we would like to make sure that we integrate y later. So let's set up y bounds on y, so it's between two constants, and I can see that, um, so if we set up bounds on this region, we would have y from 0 out to 1, and z from 0 up to 1, and then for every point there, in this surface back here in the yz plane, we would start there where x is 0 and go forward until we break through that parabola. Now that was y equals x squared, so and that, that part of the parabola is where x is positive, so it's where x is the positive square root of y. So we have x going from 0 up to the square root of y. So we found a new way to set up our integral, and this time uh, the innermost variable is going to be x, which will probably help us to um, calculate our integral here. So we're going to have the integral from 0 to 1 and from 0 to 1, those are the bounds on y and z and then the integral from 0 to root y of 12xz e to the zy squared, now dx, and these bounds can be dy or dz since the bounds were the same, so the integrals could be with respect to y or z. Those could be switched if you, if you wanted to do it. I'll just leave it as it is, though. Okay, so now our task, our first integral is pretty easy because I can pull out everything that doesn't have an x in it. So I could take out take out of this integral, I could pull out um, the 12 and the z and the e to the zy squared. So 12z e to the zy squared and then I've just got the integral from 0 to root y of x dx and then that integral is being done after that, we go dy and then dz. Okay, and this is easy, right? The antiderivative is 1 half x squared, and if we evaluate it between 0 and root y, we're just going to get y over 2. So at the next stage, our integral is from 0 to 1, and from 0 to 1 of 12 times z times e to the zy squared times y over 2. I guess y over 2 will turn that 12 into a 6. So we'll have 6zy e to the zy squared dy dz. Now, notice that the derivative with respect to y of e to the zy squared is just 2yz e to the zy squared. And I have a yz and an e to the zy squared, so the antiderivative is going to be pretty simple here. I think it's 3e um, e to the zy squared. Let me just check that really quick. 
If I take the derivative, the derivative of what's inside the exponent is going to be 2, 2zy two times that 3 will make 6zy, and then we'll have e to the zy squared. So that's our antiderivative. We just need to evaluate it between 0 and 1. And once we've got that done, we'll finish integrating from 0 to 1 with respect to z. So if I plug in a 1 for y, I get 3e to the z. And if I plug in a 0 for y, I just get minus 3. So I just integrate this from 0 to 1 with respect to z. And antiderivative of e to the z is e to the z. So I get 3e to the z minus 3z between 0 and 1. And when I plug in 1, I get 3e minus 3 minus when I plug in 0. 3 times e to the 0 would be 3 times 1 minus 3 times 0 would be 0. So altogether I have 3e minus 6 as the answer. Here's another example where we need to change the order of integration. You can see that as it is, it's, kind of, it's going to be a problem because we'll integrate with respect to y, that'll be easy, and the integral will be 1, and then we'll get an x. But then the next step, at the next step, we're going to have to integrate with respect to z, and there's nothing really to help us there. We have sine 2z over 4 minus z. So we're hoping if we could delay the z integral for a little bit, maybe something, something good would happen so that we'll be able to do the z integral. So first thing though, if we want to change the order of integration, is to figure out what region we're talking about. So let's just read off the inequalities. The bounds on y are from 0 to x. So y goes from 0 to x. And then the bounds on z, z goes from 0 to 4 minus x squared. And then we have the bounds on x, or the outermost ones, where x goes from 0 to 2. OK, so what I'm going to look at is be some nice bounds. Those are really bounds that describe a 2D region with some conditions on y, right? So we've got this 2D region. If I look at it in just the xz plane, um, x goes from 0 to 2. So that's really two vertical lines, right? And then the z goes from 0 that's the x-axis, up to some parabola that's opening down. When x is 0, z is 4, and when x is 2, z is 0. So we have a parabola that's opening down like this. And then, so the shape that we have, there's a, if we look at it in 3D space now, adding in a y-axis, there's a parabola that's opening down, in the xz plane, and then for every value in the xz plane, the y value starts at 0 and moves forward until it cuts through this other surface where y is equal to x. So what I want to do is delay this as far as possible, so I want to rewrite the bounds on this region in the xz plane. So instead of putting x between two constants, I'm going to put z between two constants. Z is between 0 and 4. And then for every value of z between 0 and 4, the x value starts at 0 and goes until it hits the parabola. Now, the equation of the parabola was z equals 4 minus x squared. But if I solve for x, x squared is 4 minus z. So x is plus or minus the square root of 4 minus z. But x is positive, so I can choose the plus sign. So here's another way to describe that same region, the same region here, just saying z goes from 0 to 4, and x goes from 0 to the square root of 4 minus z. And then finally, the y values for every, we still have the same flat region, the y value just starts at 0 and then goes forward until it cuts through the plane. So we can uh, get a different order of integration now. Notice that the bounds on y depend on x, so the y integral has to be inside the x integral, and the x the bounds on x depend on z, so the x integral has to be inside the z integral. So this integral we could say z goes from 0 to 4, and then inside of that we have the x integral from 0 to the square root of 4 minus z, and finally we have uh, the y integral from 0 to x, and we have our integrand sine 2z over 4 minus z. The innermost bounds were on y, and then we had the bounds on x, and then we had the bounds on z very last. So we've got that we're delaying the z, hoping that something will happen that will make this integrand easier. As it is, to evaluate this integral, this does not depend on x or y. So it's constant with respect to, to y, it can move through the y integral. 
and since it doesn't depend on x, it's constant with respect to x, it can move all the way out through the x integral as well. So we have the integral from 0 to 4 of sine 2z over 4 minus z, and the integral from 0 to the square root of 4 minus z, and the integral from 0 to x of dy dx dz. It's just, I moved it out there so I don't have to worry about it, because now the integral looks really easy, right? And a derivative of 1 with respect to y would be y, Evaluate between x and 0 would be x minus 0, so we just have x there. So the integral from 0 to 4 of two sin, or sine 2z over 4 minus c, and then the integral from 0 to the square root of 4 minus c of x dx, and then dz. Well, the antiderivative of x would be 1 half x squared, which we'd have to evaluate between 0 and the square root of 4 minus c, which is going to give us 1 half times, if we plug in um, the square root of 4 minus z, if we square it, we get 4 minus z, and if we square 0, we just get 0. So this inside integral here is just this, so we get the integral from 0 to 4 of sine 2z over 4 minus z times 1 half times 4 minus z dz. Now we can see that our changing of bounds paid off because the 4 minus z's cancel. So all we have to do is do the integral from 0 to 4 of sine 2z dz. Oh, and there's a 1 half. I just pulled that out. Now, antiderivative of sine 2z is probably negative cosine 2z, except for we've got to be ready for an, an extra 2 to get kicked out here. So I think the antiderivative would be negative 1 fourth cosine z. Let's just check that. If we take the derivative, we get a negative sign. The negative would kill this negative uh, of 2z, and the times the derivative of the side would be a 2. The 2 would hit the 1 fourth and give us 1 half. So we just evaluate that between 0 and, f 0 and 4. And so we have negative 1 fourth. The cosine of 2 times 4 is 8, minus negative 1 fourth. The cosine of 2 times 0 would be the cosine of 0. The cosine of 0 is 1, and 1 times, so we have a minus minus 1 fourth times 1, so we have a positive 1 fourth minus 1 fourth, the cosine of 8.